Hello and welcome everyone to the sixth session of the DuraCloud Brown Bag series. As you all may know, my name is Carissa Smith and I am the partner specialist primarily working on the DuraCloud project, which is both a managed service and an open source technology offered by the DuraSpace organization. To find out more about either DuraCloud or DuraSpace, I encourage you to visit their respective websites at duracloud.org and duraspace.org. Please note that your audio for today's call is disabled, as you might have already uh, uh, noticed. But I highly encourage participation through the chat feature, which is located in the bottom right of your screen. You simply insert your comments and click the little conversation bubble, and it will send a chat to uh, everyone, all the participants and myself. Uh, typically, during these brown bags, I save questions until the end. But feel free to insert questions as I'm going through today's session and then I will be sure to uh, address all of the questions at the end as they've come in. I always leave an uh, ample amount of time to go over as many questions as come in uh, through the chat feature, so uh, again, feel free to use that at any point during the, the uh, session today to insert your questions, and then I'll be sure to cover all of them uh, at the end. So with that, I'd like to get uh, our brown bag session started today. Um, typically, I do live demos, but today I'm going to take a step back and do more of a, a discussion session about ways in which uh, DuraCloud can help you and particular uh, use cases and issues uh, that have come, come up with various conversations I've had with DuraCloud customers and potential users and just uh, members of the community. So one moment while I advance the slide. So one of the most common issues, unfortunately, that I hear a lot when talking to, again, DuraCloud customers, community members, um, and other interested parties is that um, they, they, have a, they have or are responsible for a, a continually growing collection of digital content and no place to store it. Um, some folks have all of their content or a good portion on external hard drives or tape drives um, or in their starting or continuing uh, ongoing digitiza digitization projects and efforts and they just have nowhere to store all of this quickly amassing digital content. And I think what's scary for me to hear uh, in, in, in correlation to that is, is some folks have very little support from their central IT um, or, or IT in general. So they have no way to provision additional servers or external storage of any variety. So they're left with being responsible for all of this content and nowhere to store it. So again, hearing that issue, um, ways in which DuraCloud can help uh, hopefully solve that issue or help you solve that issue. Um, DuraCloud itself is easy and online scalable storage. Um, I'll take a step back for folks who are on the call who are not familiar with DuraCloud. Uh, DuraCloud is a web application that integrates with uh, various cloud, uh, cloud storage providers or vendors. So currently DuraCloud integrates directly with Amazon Web Services, Rackspace, Cloud Files, and uh, newly announced this month, the San Diego Supercomputer Cloud Center uh, for cloud storage. So uh, SDSC Storage is our first non-commercial academic cloud vendor that we are going to provide uh, direct integration with and allow customers to store their content uh, in SDSC Storage as well. So again, DuraCloud is a web application that integrates with one, two, or all three of, of those cloud vendors that is a a uh, customization option that is available to our customers, what, uh, what cloud vendors they'd like their DuraCloud account to be uh, integrated with. And again, just the very nature of uh, cloud storage in general is that it can very easily scale up or scale down as you need it to. And of course, um, because it's the nature of cloud storage in general, of course DuraCloud leverages uh, that easy scalability. And we also make it uh, very easy to increase or decrease your storage as well in our various subscription plans that are available on the website, uh, duracloud.org, uh, if you're interested in going to look uh, uh, either after the webinar or while I'm speaking. And I'll note that it's very simple to get started with Duracloud. You simply go to our website and sign up, or you can shoot me an email. Uh, my email will be listed on a slide later in today's presentation. Um, but we have a lot of different subscription plans to meet various use cases and needs. Um, specifically for the issue of just amassing amounts of digital content that you don't know where to store. I'll note that our preservation basic 
uh, subscription plan starts at uh, one terabyte for a year uh, for only fifteen hundred dollars. Get uh, to use DuraCloud and store that much content in one year. And there are also various other services that come out of the box with DuraCloud as well, which I will talk about in a later slide. So you get you get a lot for your money, um, and you get easily uh, provisionable storage as well without having to invest in any hardware, etc. So another, another issue that uh, commonly comes up in discussions I have with community members is their uh, interest or desire in implementing a preservation strategy that checks the box on a lot of um, preservation best practices, such as having multiple copies stored, um, specifically in different geographic regions, with different vendors, and under tech different technical administrations. So again, um, I'll just kind of explain how DuraCloud can help you uh, check those preservation best practice boxes. Um, so uh, as I mentioned uh, on the last slide, DuraCloud is integrated with Amazon, San Diego Supercomputer Cloud Storage, and Rackspace. So inherent in that integration, of course, is the fact that you're storing your content with different vendors if you so choose. And again, that's at a subscription level basis. You can choose which, which of those three or all of them or that you'd like to have your account integrated with. And then again, based on the fact that you're storing content potentially in different vendors, uh, out of the box you get uh, different geographic areas where this content is stored. Um, right now, content stored in Amazon is uh, typically in the Amazon East location. As you might expect, the San Diego Supercomputer Cloud Storage Center, which is located at the University of California, San Diego, is on the west coast of the U.S. Uh, Rackspace is located in the Midwest uh, and west portions of the United States. And then um, we do also, DuraCloud, the service does also provide uh, a couple different other geographic areas if you have a particular use case where you'd like to have content stored in the U.K., for instance leverage the Amazon capability for that as well. And then, of course, I think inherent also in integrating with these various vendors is the fact that you are storing your content in uh, different technical uh, administrations. So each of these vendors uh, stores their content in a different te technical infrastructure. And DuraCloud does the hard work of integrating with those various technical infrastructures. So you don't really have to think about it. Uh, you simply put your content in into DuraCloud, you upload your content into the DuraCloud interface, and then DuraCloud will store it with those various cloud vendors. And um, from a customer perspective, all you do is log into your DuraCloud account online through, uh, through the web, and you get to see each individual content item, all of your content, stored at the various cloud vendors. So you can ensure that indeed, uh, content item X is in Amazon and it's also in the San Diego Supercomputer Cloud Store. And uh, as my third bullet point mentions, through this DuraCloud web interface, you can very easily store, manage, and synchronize all of your content. So I should back up and say that if you do decide to become a DuraCloud customer and store your content with two vendors, uh, for instance, Amazon and SDSC, let's say, um, DuraCloud does the work of synchronizing your copies in the cloud. So essentially, you take the time and upload your content once, and DuraCloud will synchronize all of the copies in the various vendors uh, that you've chosen, and it will keep those uh, copies synchronized in an ongoing fashion as well. So as you add more content to your DuraCloud account, um, our service will automatically make sure that your copy in Amazon gets the uh, content and also your copy in San Diego Supercomputer uh, gets the newly added content and we'll keep those those copies synchronized in the cloud for you. I think that's all I wanted to say on, on this on this screen. Um, actually no, there was one other thing. Um, speaking of preservation strategies and best practices, um, DuraCloud in and of itself is not a, a certified repository. However, it can help you towards uh, a preservation strategy or preservation uh, certification. So you can uh, more easily check the boxes of geographic areas and, and vendor distribution uh, with DuraCloud. It does help you along that path to preservation best practices and preservation uh, certification. Another in, uh, interesting issue that uh, I often hear from folks in the community is the, the need for an easy way to ensure that all preservation copies are healthy. So when I've, when I've spoken to, to folks in the past, um, 
typically um, backup or preservation copies that are kept on external hard drives or tape drives, etc., not only are difficult to check the health of, meaning they are time intensive, labor intensive, and cost intensive to check the health of, but just by the very physical act of pulling the, cop the content off of those, those physical media drives and checking the health increases your, um, your likelihood that you're going to corrupt that content. Even though you're checking the health of it, just pulling it off that drive increases your risk of potentially corrupting that content. And I think one of the strengths of the cloud and DuraCloud is in, in particular is that, that that is not so much of a risk when you're checking the health of content stored in the cloud um, based on how the cloud vendors store content. They're not just storing one copy. They have various mirror images of your copies uh, of your content stored. Um, so that risk is certainly lessened. However, uh, DuraCloud, the service itself, goes the extra mile to ensure that your copy remains healthy in the cloud. And how exactly do we do that? I should answer my own question here. So the DuraCloud service on all subscription plan levels, regardless of whether you signed up for the enterprise plan or just the preservation basic plan, uh, every subscription plan includes an automated health check of all of your content. Every single content item, all copies, have an ongoing integrity or health check service run on them as they're stored in DuraCloud. And again, this is really one of the quintessential strengths of DuraCloud is that we have an ongoing health checking service running over your content. So that, that's great. It sounds fabulous. Um, but as a customer, how, what does that mean to you? Um, and what that means is that <laughs> these health checks not only are run on an ongoing basis, but then reports from these health, uh, these health checks or integrity checks on your content are then provided in the DuraCloud web interface itself. So when you log into your DuraCloud account and you're viewing your content, you will have access to health reports that tell you not only the last time your content had its integrity checked, but also the outcome of that health report. Essentially, it will give you a content item by content item list uh, and status of, those, of the health of those content items. Taking a step back for a moment and explaining how this works for the technical folks in the audience, um, when you first transfer your content into DuraCloud, our DuraCloud service will automatically calculate an MD5 checksum value and then store that MD5 value with the content item uh, for the length of its existence in DuraCloud. So until you delete that content item, it has an MD5 value uh, associated with it. The health checking or integrity checking service that runs on your DuraCloud account in an ongoing fashion will stream out each individual content item and then recalculate that MD5 value the day the service is running and compare it to the stored MD5 value. And that's where these health reports come from. Uh, the last step of the integrity service is to compare the recalculated MD5 with the stored MD5 so that you are in, indeed ensured that the content that you have stored in the cloud for a week, a month, or three years is the exact same content that you upload, uploaded however long ago it was that you transferred it into DuraCloud. And again, that information is available in the health reports that are directly integrated with the DuraCloud web interface. And again, it's available on every single copy of your content and every single content item. So you can see the health reports for the content you have stored in Amazon. And you can see the health reports for the content you have stored in Rackspace and San Diego uh, Supercomputer Cloud Storage Center as well. So we're checking all of your content and all of your copies. A uh, tangential question that usually comes up when I'm explaining our health checking service is what happens if DuraCloud detects an integrity issue on a content item? You know, what, 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 what does the interface do? What, what do I have to do? What, what are the next steps? And the answer to that really depends on the subscription plan uh, that you've signed up for. So for instance, on the DuraCloud preservation basic plan, where we only keep, we being the DuraCloud service, only has one copy of your content, um, we would simply uh, notify you, the customer, that we've detected an integrity issue on one of your content items. Simply because we only have access to one copy, there isn't really much we can do uh, beyond that other than, you know, indeed make sure that it is an integrity issue that has been detected, and then we will notify you and let you know uh, that it has been uh, noticed, and then you can take the next step of either deleting that content item or re-uploading a healthy copy from your local collection. 
However, if you have signed up for a DuraCloud subscription plan where we have two copies or three copies uh, stored in the various different cloud vendors, so we have a copy in Amazon and a copy in SDSC, for instance, if we notice an integrity issue in one of the cloud providers, let's say Amazon for this uh, particular uh, instance, we will then go to your SDSC copy, run a health check to make sure that the SDSC copy is healthy, and then automatically heal or replace your corrupt Amazon copy uh, with the healthy SDSC copy. So there's an extra level of preservation support for plans where you have multiple copies stored in DuraCloud with various vendors. But again, uh, we'll let you know one way or the other, and then we'll, we will take the appropriate action if we have access to uh, another copy of your content uh, or not. And as I mentioned, the, the third bullet here under the Solution uh, tab for DuraCloud is that when you first upload your content into DuraCloud, uh, DuraCloud, the service itself, will do an integrity check and calculate that MD5 value, or you can also pass in locally generated MD5 values as well and DuraCloud will do a check of the MD5 value that you um, have supplied versus the one that we have calculated. So again, at every, uh, every level of DuraCloud and every step of the process, we're checking the health of your content to ensure um, that your, DuraCloud, or your content stored in DuraCloud remains healthy. Um, I see a question just popped into the chat. Keep them coming, folks, and I will be sure to uh, address all of them to, at the end of today's session. Moving on to another issue that I hear uh, frequently from folks when I'm talking to them either uh, in a web environment like this or out at conferences is the need for having some sort of ongoing uh, synchronization of local content to a cloud preservation or backup copy. So I know there are a lot of tools available for local backups, synchronization of local backups, and as you might expect, DuraCloud also has tools that allow you to synchronize your local content uh, with your cloud uh, content. So uh, DuraCloud has something called the Synchronization Utility, which is a standalone tool that you can run on a local server or on your local machine. And essentially what it does is it allows you to point it at a local um, file directory or um, file structure. And the Synchronization tool will continue to watch uh, that, that local content for any content additions or content changes. And it will upload those uh, content uh, additions or edits uh, to your DuraCloud copy. So essentially keeping your local content uh, synchronized up to the minute in an ongoing fashion with your cloud copy. Of course this tool can be used uh, in an ongoing fashion, so up to the minute synchronizations happening, or you can very easily uh, script a schedule of this tool so that you can run weekly or nightly or monthly backups uh, as well. Um, I think another use case around this tool is potentially doing some sort of uh, collection snapshotting, which is also available, uh, a, a possible use case you could fulfill with our synchronization utility as well. But I guess the, the summary or the bottom line is that DuraCloud provides additional tools outside of the DuraCloud web interface that allow you to meet particular use case needs. So in, in this particular instance, uh, synchronizing your local content uh, uh, at some frequency, whether it be up to the minute, uh, daily, weekly, monthly, etc. Um, again, that's something that you can certainly choose to customize uh, with our synchronization utility. So moving right along here, uh, another issue uh, that I hear uh, often that is not necessarily technical in nature, but something that DuraCloud certainly helps with um, is for folks inside of the university community uh, in particular who have a hard time negotiating with outside vendors for whatever types of services or storage. Um, we, we've spoken with folks who have a hard time in their organization setting up or even signing service agreements with these commercial vendors, um, handling invoicing, whether it be monthly or pay-as-you-go or um, any of those types of scenarios or paying by a credit card versus a yearly invoice. Um, I know for uh, some particular customers of DuraCloud right now, the Amazon pay-as-you-go monthly invoicing uh, system was just something that they at their university could not handle. They had to have an annual invoice and they had to be able to pay it up front. So all of those types of situations uh, are things that DuraCloud, through um, being hosted by the DuraSpace not-for-profit organization can help with. Um, 
DuraSpace, the organization, handles all of the negotiations with these various uh, cloud vendors. So you, the customer, simply deal with us, uh, DuraSpace and, and DuraCloud. You deal with one person uh, for both uh, negotiations and contracts and service agreements and uh, invoice and also for support as well. So essentially this means that you get one consolidated invoice from DuraCloud, you get one contract and a lot less hassle than dealing with uh, each of these individual vendors uh, at the end of the day. And again, it's essentially a, a menu that you can choose from at the DuraCloud level which vendors you'd like to deal with uh, to store your content with, but you're dealing with just one uh, institution being DuraCloud or DuraSpace for the actual contract itself. And we are um, very easy to negotiate with in terms of uh, making changes on a service agreement and or billing the monthly or annual invoice up front. Um, again, we are here to, to work with you and, and meet your needs. So um, we are certainly open to whatever, uh, whatever would, best, would best meet your needs at your institution. Whereas working with some of these big commercial vendors who really don't have your best interests in mind uh, is not usually very easy to do. Um, and I should mention too that support uh, for DuraCloud and any of the vendors that you have decided to integrate your account with comes directly from DuraCloud as well. Um, you get to deal with just one, one person or the DuraCloud team. You don't have to worry about going directly to these cloud vendors and, and submitting a ticket and waiting weeks and weeks before you hear back for support. Um, that comes directly through DuraCloud and the DuraSpace organization as well. So you're just dealing with one small not-for-profit organization versus a big commercial entity. Going back for a minute to a more, more technical issue that comes up um, from time to time with folks when I'm talking to them is the need for an easy to use disaster recovery or a local file recovery um, system strategy, uh, something that allows them to, to sleep better at night essentially. And DuraCloud can also assist uh, with this particular use case as well. Um, not only can you store your content and preserve it for the long term in, in DuraCloud, but you can certainly pull that content back out of DuraCloud, uh, either doing a full system restore or just individual file downloads and replacements of your local content. So uh, as I mentioned, the DuraCloud Sync tool, which helps you upload content to DuraCloud and keep your local system synchronized. We also have uh, something called the DuraCloud Retrieval Utility which allows you to essentially bulk download content from DuraCloud. And again, this allows you to perform uh, full system restores. Uh, if heaven forbid you had a disaster scenario, a disaster recovery scenario that you needed to uh, pull all your content out of DuraCloud and replace your local files. And again, as I mentioned, because DuraCloud is a, a web application and you can log in and view your content uh, through a web interface, you can very easily retrieve individual files as well if you've noticed, if you've noticed a, a local individual file that's uh, become corrupted or had an integrity issue. Um, you can certainly pull your healthy copy uh, right out of DuraCloud uh, at that minute, assuming you have an internet connection, and you can download it directly from uh, DuraCloud at that time. I think I have one more issue that I wanted to cover, and then I can open up the floor for questions. Um, I've, I've mentioned a lot of issues around preservation and backup policies, etc. Um, but we do have some access issues and or use cases that DuraCloud can help you with as well. Um, we usually spend a little less time on those, but um, they do come up from time to time. Uh, in particular, some folks want the ability to share their content with others that they've hosted in the cloud. So they've, they've put up a nice little collection, uh, preservation collection in DuraCloud, and they'd like to share it. Um, and you can do that a, a couple different ways. Of course, because DuraCloud has your content online, um, you can very easily access it if you have a DuraCloud account login. Um, but for some of our subscription plans, you do have the option of making that content open to the public, meaning that uh, <coughs> you could share it with, with others uh, in the world. Uh, I should note that each individual content item stored in DuraCloud has a unique storage URL that's associated with it. Um, by default, that storage URL is hidden behind a, a login screen and other security layers within DuraCloud. But again, uh, on some sub subscription plans, you do have the option of making uh, certain pieces uh, 
parts of your Dura Cloud content open to the public, meaning that those storage URLs are then available to anyone who would want to access that content item. Or um, I think probably more frequently, uh, the use case is around using those stu storage URLs, embedding them into additional outside uh, applications and essentially using DuraCloud to serve your content. Um, so again, you wouldn't be driving users to DuraCloud itself, but you would just be leveraging DuraCloud as, as a content server, whether it be for images or media files or documents, etc. So DuraCloud can help assist uh, with sharing your content with others. Again, if you have a collection that you've added uh, to DuraCloud and that you'd like to then, um, for instance, embed in your you know, library portal, for instance, or some other uh, application, you can certainly uh, leverage DuraCloud to do that as well. So I think that's it for the issues that I wanted to go over today. Those are really the, the some of the most frequent ones that I hear from folks, again, when I'm talking to them, either current DuraCloud customers, interested parties, or when I'm out uh, uh, at conferences talking to, to folks in this community on, on their issues with preserving content and, and backing up content and providing access to content, etc. And uh, again, how DuraCloud can, can serve to help solve some of those issues and, and use cases. I'll do a quick plug for a DuraCloud trial account. Um, simply go to duracloud.org and click on the Try It button and you can uh, try DuraCloud treat, uh, free, excuse me, tree, free for 60 days uh, with no obligation to continue using it. It's really a, a, a great way to try out DuraCloud and see how it could fit in your, uh, in your institution's workflow and, and um, you can upload content, download content. You can do all of the things that I mentioned today, uh, integrate with a couple different cloud vendors and see for yourself uh, what that looks like. And I do have um, recordings of all of my past DuraCloud brown bags available as well. So um, if you want to see what DuraCloud looks like but aren't quite ready to try all DuraCloud, you can feel free to, to view any of those recordings as well. So with that, I'm going to open up the floor for questions. Feel free to start uh, using the chat feature again, which is on the should be on the bottom right-hand side of your screen, to start asking questions. Um, I have one from Paul Allen right off the bat. What kind of corruption rates are you seeing now with current DuraCloud content and the various cloud storage services? Great question, Paul, and it's something that I, I should have covered when I was talking about that. Uh, in the past three, three plus years that DuraCloud has been in existence and has been operating with these cloud vendors, we have yet to, to experience an integrity issue on content that was the fault of the vendor itself, meaning that we noticed you know, a content item stored at Amazon became uh, a corrupt. Uh, knock on wood, we have yet to experience that. Um, but again, uh, really the, the, the strength of DuraCloud is that we're not trusting the cloud vendors to uh, make sure our content remains uh, safe and healthy. Uh, we're going that extra step to, to run those ongoing integrity checks to ensure that the, co the content stays healthy. But knock on wood, we haven't had any, uh, any bit integrity or corruption on content issues uh, at this point yet. We haven't experienced that. Uh, another question came in from Dana. Our DSpace instance is backed up in the cloud through Amazon S3. Is Amazon S3 the equivalent of a basic DuraCloud account, or do you offer more tools? DuraCloud runs uh, and uses storage in Amazon S3, um, but as I mentioned there, DuraCloud provides uh, a lot more additional services on top of what comes out of the box with Amazon S3. So with DuraCloud, you get not only the DuraCloud web interface, which integrates with other storage providers, and you can very easily choose down the road to create a copy in SDSC, for instance, um, but you do also get that ongoing integrity check that is not, uh, that is not something that Amazon provides. Um, Amazon provides an integrity check when you first, I think, transfer your content into S3, um, and then they just tell you that they're keeping your content healthy, but they don't provide you with any reporting tools or showing you that the actual integrity checks are happening. Um, additional tools that DuraCloud provides out of the box uh, that would be uh, probably better than Amazon um, are a direct integration with DSpace, actually. Um, you can, from the DSpace interface itself, back up content into DuraCloud and pull it out of uh, DuraCloud on a collection item basis, a collection and an item basis, and I think there's another subset in DSpace as well. Um, DuraCloud is also integrated with the Fedora repository software as well. 
Um, let's see, there are a couple other additional services that, that DuraCloud also provides, the ability to duplicate content again over to different uh, cloud vendors. So um, one of the risks you take with uh, using S3 directly is that if Amazon decides to change its prices or change its service offering, uh, you, you have to either deal with that change or uh, take it upon yourself to move that content over to another vendor. DuraCloud and the DuraCloud web interface, you could simply sign up for uh, an additional vendor and uh, our service will automatically create the duplicate copy over into another cloud vendor. So you're really, uh, your risk is, is much less when you're dealing with DuraCloud just because we're, we're integrated with various vendors that you can very easily uh, move into and out of. Uh, your content into and out of, um, and you don't have to worry about the technical integrations that go on uh, in the background. It's really as simple as clicking a button. Um, it's called duplicate, duplicating your content. That's our duplication service in DuraCloud, and it truly is as simple as going into the web interface and clicking duplicate, <laughs> and your content moves from your Amazon storage area over to your other cloud vendor storage area. Uh, Stuart asks, might be a silly question, as all content is stored in the cloud, what are the advantages of choosing specific geographic options? Um, that's a good, a good question, Stuart, and this is really dependent on your local preservation apology, uh, policy. Apology. Um, one of our particular, one of our DuraCloud customers right now has a preservation policy where they want six copies of their content stored, and uh, I think half of them have to be out of the state uh, that they're in currently. Um, so it's really more checking that box on, on preservation policies, being able to choose different geographic options. Um, some folks, I think particularly on the West Coast, are very cognizant of the fact that uh, potential natural disasters like earthquakes could potentially um, hurt their systems if they store all of their content uh, on, in a U.S. West uh, region. So they, they like to have one copy close to home in the U.S. West and another copy uh, in a U.S. East region, region for instance. Um, as all of you might have seen in the news here just a couple months ago, Amazon U.S. East regions were hit with all of the thunderstorms that happened in the U.S. Um, state of Virginia, D.C. area. So uh, again, some of, some of Amazon was down for a little while, but the Amazon West regions were untouched. So really, uh, I think it... it there's many reasons why geographic uh, locations are a good thing, but one, one in particular that comes to mind are just natural disaster reasons. Um, but then some folks have uh, legal uh, restrictions or policies where they need to store things only in their state or only have one copy in state and one copy out of state. Um, again, it really, really depends on your, your local preservation policies. I hope that's, I hope that's a, what you were <laughs> what what your question was entailing, but if you uh, were hoping for a different answer, uh, let me know and I can uh, continue to flesh that out. Um, all the other participants, feel free to chime in with questions or if there is something that I mentioned that was a little fuzzy, didn't make sense, or um, I hinted at something within the DuraCloud interface that you'd like to see, I can... Um, very easily bring up the DuraCloud login screen if, if you're interested in, in seeing uh, what a content stored in DuraCloud looks like, whether it be at Amazon or SDSC, uh, et cetera, let me know. I'm very happy to do that as well. As far as I know, no other questions have come in yet. I'll wait a few more minutes. Um, and while I wait, I will go to my last slide in my slide pack. So my next brown bag session uh, will be the last Wednesday of October on the 31st which I believe is Halloween for all the U.S. folks out there. Um, the topic will be around how DuraCloud is different than Amazon, which I think Dana was getting at part of her uh, question today, so I let the cat out of the bag on that one. Um, but certainly I'll be going over uh, a lot more features and functionality that differentiates DuraCloud from Amazon and our other cloud vendors as well. Um, of course, it, I'm sure it'll be a little sales pitchy. Um, there, these brown bags do have a little bit of that, I'm sure. But again, I'll be t pointing towards technical differences, service differences, uh, administration and financial differences between DuraCloud and the various uh, commercial and non-commercial cloud vendors that you could potentially choose uh, instead of DuraCloud. 
um, and I'll be taking, of course, questions around that as well. If there is something in particular, a, a topic that you would love to see me cover or someone else in the community who you know is uh, the, the go-to person for a particular topic, please feel free to send me those suggestions. My email address is on the screen in front of you, csmith at duraspace.org. Or if you just have a question about DuraCloud or how to get a trial account or, or anything really, feel free to reach out to me. And more information is available on the duracloud.org slash brownbag series page. Um, Dana asks if a recording of this will be available later. Yes, it will be available on the DuraCloud Brown Bag series page, and it links you off to uh, the DuraCloud YouTube channel where all of the recordings of all these sessions are available. Uh, Dave Block asks, can you give us a feel for the pricing options or price tiers of DuraCloud? Yes, I certainly can. Let me bring up. Um, they're available on the DuraCloud.org uh, pricing page, and let me quickly bring that up for you folks. Um, so the lowest tier, as I mentioned, is the DuraCloud um, Preservation Basic Plan. Give it one second while I get my screen set up here. Um, and that is starting uh, at $1,500 for the uh, first terabyte of storage, and this is for an annual contract. One moment, and I will get this screen shared. Uh, here we go. So again, it's preservation basic, $1,500 a year for the first terabyte, and then for additional terabytes, it's $1,300 a year. Uh, again, that would be terabytes two, two through whatever. Uh, again, this is on an annual contract basis. For the Preservation Plus plan, which includes a copy at Amazon and a copy at SDSC, it's $2,500 a year for the first terabyte, and then $2,100 $2, a year for any additional terabytes. And then... Uh, Again, those are the preservation plans. The enterprise plans are um, geared towards institutions who wish to uh, share their DuraCloud account with various departments and want to have full administrative um, capabilities in DuraCloud. In other words, they want to provision a lot of different users, have various uh, user permissions and group permissions enabled. Uh, that's really what the DuraCloud enterprise plan um, is geared toward. And again, we have two levels of the enterprise plan uh, that are a little bit more expensive just because you get the administrative uh, capabilities. And you can see the pricing there on your screen. Again, the difference between standard and premium is the fact that standard includes one copy at Amazon. The premium has actual two copies, one at Amazon and one, of, one at SDSC. And again, that's really the difference between DuraCloud Preservation Basic and Plus. One copy at Amazon for the Preservation Basic, two copies. Uh, of your in the Preservation Plus plan, one at Amazon and one at Again, uh, I don't see any other questions um, that are coming up uh, at the moment. Did anything that I just mentioned about pricing bring up questions for folks? Um, we do have about seven or so minutes left in the, in the brown bag, so I'm happy to answer questions around pricing, if what I just um, shared uh, brought any to mind. Uh, I will say for folks who might be thinking this in the background, uh, with the current or the most most recent Amazon uh, news item of the uh, newest Amazon storage options, the, the really cheap uh, Amazon storage option, that is now coming online, Amazon Glacier. Um, DuraCloud has yet to integrate with Amazon Glacier, but that is something that is on our direct roadmap. So uh, keep your eyes open for news around that in the coming months. Um, we certainly will be looking towards integrating directly with Amazon Glacier storage as well um, for very, very, very cheap preservation storage. Um, again, I don't really have anything else to share on, on that quite yet. Um, but again, keep your eyes open for news items, and I'm sure I'll have a brown bag when we are ready to announce a glacier uh, when we're when we're ready when we're <laughs> when we're at that point. Any other questions from folks uh, in the audience today that I, that I can ask or that I can ask that I can answer? Uh, Tira asks, can you give us a sense of how many subscribers you have now? 
Um, I'm assuming by subscribers you mean customers, Tira, and we have about 20 or so customers, and these are uh, not individuals, these are institutions that are currently using Dara Cloud, and um, it, it's constantly growing. We keep getting folks signing up uh, for Dara Cloud on a monthly basis, so. Um, and it runs, runs the spectrum in terms of use cases for these folks. Um, like I mentioned, uh, one of our customers has a very, very stringent preservation policy where they like to keep six copies of their content, and they currently are storing two of those six in DuraCloud. Um, and then other folks, um, actually one of our newest customers just has uh, the first issue that I brought up, very little IT support and digitization projects that are just creating a, a real issue for them in terms of where they're storing their digital content. So they turn to DuraCloud to store it, uh, store their digital content in the cloud. Any other questions I can answer for folks in the last few minutes of today's uh, brown bag session? All right, well, thank you all for your participation today. I appreciate all of the great questions and for your time. Um, again, feel free to tune in, or I encourage you to tune in uh, in October for my next session. And again, if you have any questions whatsoever, please feel free to reach out to me at csmith at duraspace.org um, with suggestions for current or upcoming topics or just uh, any questions that you may have. Um, have a great afternoon, everyone. It has been a pleasure.